it's time to introduce you to a powerful concept that I've been developing that I call the social matrix. Uh, this is going to pull back the curtain. This is the ultimate conspiracy theory. It is a conspiracy theory that trumps all other conspiracy theories. So you've been warned. What is the social matrix? The social matrix is the entire collection that we might call society of elements and institutions which are used by your mind to, as reference points, as anchors, in order to construct your sense of reality and how you should live your life. What most people don't appreciate is just how deeply social human beings are. We like to think that our mind is just interacting with reality, with an objective reality out there. The information that we get from society, like from the books that we read, from the schools we go to, from the people we talk to, the public intellectuals we listen to, and so forth, that they are just giving us straight reports of what reality is. What we're not noticing is we're not noticing how we as a human species are actually co-constructing reality together and are using each other in this social fabric sort of way in order to create a sort of web of reality that all of us together can participate in and do so in such an unconscious manner that we are not aware of this larger construction that we've made and then we confuse that construction for reality itself. And then our society is designed in such a way as to make this process opaque to us so that we don't see what's going on and we take it as reality. This is such a profound notion that it's difficult to even know where to begin unraveling it and explaining it because it's a giant intertangled tapestry and web that we have woven together. And it's precisely because the web extends so far in all directions and it has no opposite or it has no alternative that you can appeal to that the web seems like reality itself. This is the social matrix. What I really mean here is how do you know anything at all about reality, about life, about what it is, about what's right, about what's wrong, about what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what's true, what's false? How do you even know where humanity came from? How do you even know where your family came from? How do you know where you physically came from? How do you know where your body came from? What your body is made out of? How do you know these things? If you do a sort of archeology span on your own mind, you can go back and look in, in your past. You can excavate and try to unravel the beginnings of your own mind and your own sense of reality and knowledge. Where did it all come from? And what you'll start to notice is that 99% of everything you know and believe came from society, came from other people. You didn't discover it on your own. You didn't do the experiments. You weren't there in the past to see human history. You weren't there at your own conception and your own birth. Where did you get all this information? You think you know what is happening here, but where did you get this information? You got it from other people. But notice, if you got it from other people, this assumes something. This assumes the people you got it from themselves were not self-deceived. And this is the trick. This is what you've taken for granted. You've always assumed from the very beginning of your life that the information that you've been being fed, regardless of who or where it was being fed to you from, whether your parents, your siblings, your friends, your coworkers, professors, teachers, religious leaders, whoever you were getting your information from, you've always generally assumed that the information was true and that those people were not lying to you and were not themselves self-deceived.